Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. One of my favorite companies, Brennell's, invited me out to a really cool event with 88 Tactical in their Tecama location way out in Nebraska. It was a short trip and they packed a lot into it, but one of the classes that they taught us was high thread vehicle engagements. So if you don't know about 88 Tactical, they do a lot of tactical training for law enforcement, military, and even civilians like myself. I did a little bit of a crash course, no pun intended, of the high threat vehicle engagement. And I just wanted to go over a few things that I learned. So with the high threat vehicle engagement, I learned where to shoot from inside the car, where to shoot from outside the car, how to protect myself and use the car as cover. Before I go any further, I just wanna say that I am not an expert. Yes, I have watched some YouTube videos and that doesn't make me an expert. So you can't be an expert after watching my video, but I just wanted to share my experience. So please don't take everything that I say and everything that I show you as the absolute law because that is not it. I just am out there having fun. And you know what, if you can take a little bit away from this, and I know I have, maybe you can protect yourself, protect loved ones if a situation ever arises. There are typically three to four pillars on a car. A regular sedan is gonna have three pillars. A SUV is gonna have four pillars. Now with most cars, these pillars are part of the frame of the vehicle itself, which is made out of steel. Typically, you cannot penetrate steel with a bullet. Even an AR, even a shotgun slug, especially a handgun. And guess what? We tried it. Now, I don't know if one of these pillars can be shot through with a 500. I don't know if it would go through with a higher caliber or a elephant gun. I'm not sure, but this is what we tried. And by the way, no one's going to be shooting at you with a 500 anyway, unless you're a high roller gangster. The idea is that you're going to use these pillars as cover because bullets don't go past them, don't go through them. So I was able to learn the way to shoot with my body, mostly behind each one of these pillars. You can also take cover behind the wheels as well because the axles are pretty much made to steal themselves. So that is a place where you can take cover when you're shooting on the ground. And then of course the engine. And what was really interesting is that the doors provide no cover whatsoever. A simple nine millimeter bullet will go right through a door. So do not take cover behind the door. In this training video, you can see that there are stationary targets. Now, as you know, if you're being shot at and you're taking cover, your target will probably not be standing still. So if you think about these targets as a moving person, so there might be a person, single person here that is now moving lower, that is now moving here, which is why you have to understand how to move from each pillar and each different cover position. We worked on how to get down on the ground safely and how to get up from the ground safely. The most important thing is when you're getting down on the ground, you wanna make sure that you never sweep yourself with your firearm. Cause especially in a high stress situation, you know, your finger might be on that trigger and you definitely don't wanna have any of your body in front of that gun. So learning how to safely get down on the ground in a stable shooting position and get safely back up was really important as well. I know a lot of you are saying these pillars don't really provide that much protection, right? You know, especially a larger size person and the pillar is only this wide, it's not gonna provide a lot of protection. But if you think about it, look at your standard plate carrier. The plate carrier itself isn't that wide. We're mostly just wanting to protect our vital organs. At one of the days, we learned how to safely carry a firearm, whether we're engaging a target or how to safely hold your weapon in a safe direction. Now, of course, most of us know the four important firearm safety rules, right? And one of them is kind of interesting because if you're in a situation where there's lots of people around, 
there's not always a safe direction to point your firearm. Is it, you know, is it up? Is it straight up? Is it straight down? Maybe you just draw it in, maybe it's low ready. It kind of depends on the situation in these types of environments. I also got to shoot inside a car, which is really kind of fun and scary at the same time. So I've never actually shot out a window. Uh, so this was definitely an experience for me. Another thing that I learned as far as how you shoot through a windshield is that your bullet's not going to go straight. Obviously the window is slanted and depending on if you're shooting from the outside or the inside, you're going to want to treat this a little bit differently. If you're inside the vehicle and you want to shoot a threat through the windshield, really the best thing you're going to want to do is blast a hole into that windshield and make room for the bullet because your first bullet, while it will go through the windshield, it's going to go up. So if you're aiming center or if you're aiming low, your first bullet is going to actually move up from the windshield. This is because it's just going to find the path of least resistance, which is going to be up because that's how the slant is. Same thing goes for when you're shooting a threat through a windshield from the outside. The slant is the opposite way, so your first bullet hole, if you're aiming center mass, it's going to go down. So again, what you do is you just put enough rounds through that windshield to make a hole and you shoot through it. Honestly, the first time I did it, I was a little bit scared. I was a little bit nervous of the glass breaking or fragments flying at me, but you know, I was wearing safety glasses. Uh, no, I didn't have a mask on or anything like that because really there wasn't that much glass coming back at me. Obviously in a real threat situation, you're not gonna worry too much about the glass shards. I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something. I know I did. I wanna say thank you to Brunel's again for inviting me out and a huge thank to 88 Tactical and all their staff. They are amazing group of people. And thank you for watching my channel and check out the video at the end. Oh, people, people. Is there a robber here? All right, let's move. Let's move. Let's get away from this car. Let's get away. Let's get some better cover. Five nine, five nine, nine nine nine. Eight, eight, eight. Eight, eight. Ten, ten, ten. Nine, nine, eight. All right, they're down. They're down. They're down.
Shoot him through that rearview mirror. Oh, yeah, you can. Fuck that rearview mirror. There you go. It felt good, didn't it? Does it fit? Good. Good job. Just hold it just a minute. Keep up, keep up, keep up. Let's get out, let's get out! Out, 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 let's get out! People, people! Keep up, keep up, keep up! Keep one, 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 one! Cover! I got it, I got it! You guys can shoot Tom and Paul through the car. You can shoot Tom and Paul through the car. Through the car. Yeah. if you need to. Keep calm, keep calm! Get through the windshield, Pia! Keep calm, keep calm! Oh, oh, oh. And Nora, and Nora, and Nora! Let's move, 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 move! I'll get right side! Ten, ten, ten! I got him! Ten, ten, eight! Impenetrable. Impen impenetrable? Say that five times fast. Impenetrable. What else? What else?